Okay, so now let us very quickly see how we should add complex numbers, subtract complex numbers, multiply, divide, etc. You will find it is the same idea that you already know, okay, except that now you are going to deal with two, two numbers. Just keep in mind that i square is minus 1. That's it. Everything is built around this one simple idea. Okay, so let us take one simple example 2 plus 3i. Now, if I have this plus 6 minus 4i, these are two complex numbers and I want to add them. So, what I am going to do when I am going to add them is to basically look at this number and that number. The real parts will add up, the imaginary parts will separately add up. Okay, so the real parts add up. So, 2 and 6 together, what do you get? 8, 3i and 4i, but that is a 3i plus with this a minus 4i. So, you are going to get a minus 1i or minus 1i, we do not write the 1, we usually just leave it as 8 minus i. Okay, now if I had instead of a plus, suppose the question was minus, okay, then you have to be little bit more careful exactly what you do with minus. Think of it like here as far as all this is concerned, i behaves like x. Whatever you did in algebra, you did right. Suppose you had 2 plus 3x, what would you have done? All the like terms you will join, all the unlike terms you will join, right? All the different terms you will join. So like terms here and these like terms which will basically be in terms of x you will join, right? The same idea here. So let us say that I have 4 root 3 minus root 2 i. Now I can have anything with i, right? Any real number with i. So it could be root 2 with i, okay? Minus 5 plus 2 i. Now it's a minus, it's a minus 5 plus 2 i. So then look at this, this is the real part. Do not get confused by this and looking at the i. i's are completely separate. This is a real number, that is a real number. So when I combine these two, what am I going to get? 4 root 3 minus 5. This is one single real number. Okay. And this is i, this is a minus root 2 minus of 2. This minus just distributes over both of these. So minus 5 minus 2. So this basically is going to become minus of root 2 plus 2 times i. So x right now will be this y will be this whole thing. So if I wanted to draw this on the argon diagram, how will it look? This is a positive number because 4 times 1.7, okay, 4 times 0.7 is going to give me 7 into 4, 2.8. So that means it's going to be 4 plus 2.8, 6.8. 6.8 minus 5, 1.8. So it's going to be somewhere there, 1.8. And then this number is 1.414 plus 2 about 3.4. So it will be somewhere there and so the number, do you think it is going to be up? It has a minus sign. So where is it going to be? 3.414 but it is a minus 3.414. So the number is going to be here. So not there. Okay. So you have to be careful a little bit with where we are going to put this. This is x and this was y but this is minus y right so it's i should call it y this is x plus i y y itself is negative that's all so y comes with that minus sign so when i say what is the imaginary part of this number what will you say will you say 2 plus root 2 minus 2 plus root 2 that will be the imaginary part so this is as far as addition and subtraction is concerned and that's very straightforward when you have multiplication let us try a multiplication 2 plus 3i like we had there and here what I am going to do is to write 1 minus root 2i. I want to multiply these two. So you just do it step by step. This into this, this into this, this into this and this into that. So just write down four steps. So that is the first step. What is that? 2. The second step it is 2 times minus root 2 i, I will keep it a little away because this is actually going to give me a imaginary quantity. So minus 2 root 2 i, 
Okay, so I have now done that second step. Now the third step which is this, again gives me an imaginary number. Because this is imaginary, that is real. So the product of imaginary and real, in fact that is important to keep in mind. 3 times 4i, this is imaginary, this is real, just multiply the real numbers. So that is going to become 12i. So 3i times 1 is 3i, that is imaginary, so let us put that here. And then I have 3i times minus root 2i. What do I do there? So let us multiply these two. 3 times minus root 2. So minus 3 root 2 i square. Okay? And that was a plus there. But i square is actually minus 1. Every time you find an i square, immediately convert it into minus 1. What will I do if I get an i power 7? Think. So write it as i square, i square, i square, i. Okay. What is this? Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, i. Okay. Minus 1, minus 1 is of course 1. This is minus 1 into i. Now this becomes 1, so it is minus i. So i power 7 is minus i. In fact, the useful thing is i power 4 is 1. I square is not 1, I square is minus 1. Okay, so if I write I power 7 as I power 4, 1, ignore, I square, I. So this is I power 7. This is 1, this is minus 1, so minus I. Anyway, right now I do not have to worry, it is only simply minus 1. So if I put this as minus 1, minus 1 into minus becomes plus, and so we can just simply write this as this quantity. This is the real part and now let us write this 3 minus 2 root 2 times i that is the imaginary part. So it is simple because all you have to do is to just distribute this multiplication a b suppose I called it suppose in general I want a plus i b into x plus i y what am I going to get a x do not remember it as a formula, just do it. A x, then you are going to get A y, but that is going to come with an i. So i times A y, i times B x, so plus B x. And then i times B times i times y, so B y times i square which is minus B y, so minus B y. Notice there is a minus here. Where did that minus come from? I square. So that is the real part and this is the imaginary part. Okay. So, but do not remember it, just do it. Now the only other thing that we need to focus on is division. So let us do that also. So the first thing that we have to do is to be able to divide. Okay. So if I want to divide A by B, generally I must know what to do with 1 by B. So this is just simply A into 1 by B. And whenever I have a complex number, the problem is what do you do with division? Because I have two numbers sitting there. Okay. Let us think about what to do when I have 2 plus 3i, 1 divided by 2 plus 3i. Because if I have, let us say, 4 plus 7i divided by 2 plus 3i, actually what is it? It is 1 by 2 plus 3i into that other number, the numerator, just like this. So let us first concentrate on this, then we will look at an example where you involve that. So if you see this, you have already seen what to do when you have uh, uh, irrational kind of thing at the denominator, right? We call it thirds, right? So suppose I had 1 by 2 plus root 3, what do you generally do? What do we call it? We multiply and divide by conjugate, conjugate because we do not like this fellow sitting here. It is okay to have it in the numerator, but we do not like it in the denominator. So we say, let us multiply and divide by its conjugate. And then what is the great idea? This product will, ah, because it is a plus b into a minus b, it will become a square minus b square. Now that root 3 will go away because it will become 4 minus three. root 3 square, which is 3. So it will become 4 minus 3, 1. one. Okay, so this will then become 1 and 2 minus root 3 
and instead of having 1 by 2 plus root 3, we end up with 2 minus root 3. This looks much more easier than that. Same, very exact same idea here. We don't like that i sitting down. So what do we do? We get it of the i. How do we get it of the i? Multiply and divide by 2 minus 3i. Now this is a very, very normal step. Whenever you see something in the denominator, multiply by its conjugate. We still in fact use the same word. This is also called conjugate. What if I had 2 minus 3i? 2 plus, plus 3i. That will be the conjugate. What if I had a square root? No problem. If it was root 3, you put a root 3 there. Okay. Right now, complex is worse than this kind of irrational combination. Rational plus irrational. Right? This itself is bad. But this is worse. So our first job should be to get rid of the complex. It may turn out that finally we end up with something looking like this. But you know what to do with this. That is the next step. At this point, of course, these are nice numbers, 2 and 3. So we are just going to multiply by 2 minus 3i. So then what happens? Well, 2 plus 3i, 2 minus 3i. So 2 into 2, 4. Minus, actually just think, with i, it is going to be a plus b into a minus b is a square minus b square. But right now, the minus, there is going to be i square. And so it will become plus. plus. So you don't even have to worry whether this will become 0. In fact, the only time it will become 0 is, here you might have to worry, sometimes, very rarely. Okay, but, okay, but there might be a reason to worry because one of them may turn out to be 0. If you wrote this badly, usually even here you should not worry because it's real and, I mean, rational and irrational will never cancel out and make it 0. But here you definitely don't have to worry because it's going to become plus. So 2 square 4 minus 9 into minus 1, so plus 9. And in the numerator, I have 2 minus 3i. Okay, so what is this? 13. So 2 by 13 minus 3 by 13i. That is this number. So 1 by 2 plus 3i becomes this. Okay. We, we should worry if it's going to become 0 in the denominator, right? But it will never happen unless it was already 0. So when will this combination become 0? In fact, it's a very useful combination. It keeps coming up many times. Whenever I have x plus iy, I'm going to multiply by x minus iy. I'm going to do this so many times. It's a good idea to give it a name. So we call this z. We call that conjugate of z. We write conjugate of z like that. Okay. And when I multiply z and z conjugate, look at what you are going to get. x square. Well, minus x i, I times x y plus i times x y will cancel out. Minus i square times y square. But minus i square is 1 because i square is minus 1. So minus i square is 1. So I'll end up with x square plus y square. Positive, positive. It will not be 0. So when will this be 0? If this has to be equal to 0, under what condition can x square plus y square, both real numbers, x and y, when can it become 0? When x is 0 and y is 0. But if x is 0 and y is 0, what is z? 0. So the only number for which it will be 0 is when z is 0. Now, this thing is very important, z, z conjugate, okay, it's not 0, so we don't have to worry. If it was, if z was not 0, it is not 0, okay. This thing has a nice name. It is called the modulus of z. Well, not quite, it is modulus square. Root of this is called modulus. This is modulus square, okay. So, we will discuss a little bit more about what the meaning of modulus is. You will see that it actually means the length of that vector that we were talking about in a minute. Okay, one will see that. But you will see that the modulus comes up in many interesting places. So, if I had a 1 by z, you can immediately think of what are we doing. We are going to multiply by z conjugate. You can write it as z conjugate by z z conjugate. 
Now this is going to be a real number. Okay, we will use the symbol modulus z square to talk about this. So I can rewrite this as z by modulus z square. So 1 by z is z conjugate by modulus z square. Okay, so we have just seen that example. Do not worry too much about this. You will see as you start using it, you will find that it becomes quite easy. I am just going to point out as we keep progressing what the names are. This thing is called z conjugate. Z, z conjugate. Z, z conjugate is x square plus y square. That is going to come back so many times. It is worth remembering. Root of x square plus y square is called modulus. Modulus square is x square plus y square. Z, z conjugate is modulus square. Is it okay? 